Y'all still doing all right, looks like. Y'all still saved and everything. Me too. Isn't that nice? I'd like for y'all to uh, pray with me. Y'all mind standing up? I believe Americans need more exercise, don't y'all? <laughs> I got my three miles in with leg weights this morning. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you for the mighty Holy Ghost, and we appreciate you, God. Thank you for the great opportunity, God, to stand and God speak the truth of the Holy Ghost, and we thank you that the devil's a liar. He's always a liar, and God's always King and Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we thank you that we've made you King and Lord in our lives, and we appreciate it, God. I ask you by the Holy Ghost, change us tonight, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Be seated, please. Get your Bibles. Ms. Hogan, you mind coming up here a minute? <clears throat> this here is the uh, best way to describe her to y'all is the best thing that ever happened to me besides Jesus. <clears throat> Isn't she pretty? <laughs> embarrassing. Everybody look at her new shoes I bought her. She's real embarrassed now. Uh, but I want y'all to look at her. If you remember, last time I was here, I told you about her getting burned. I believe I did. I did. From her waist up. And I mean, she, her fingernails were burned off, her eye, eyebrows and eyelashes, her hair, and her face was completely charred. And I want y'all just to look how Jesus healed her. Look at Jesus. Can you say something? Come on, see? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Isn't that nice how God spared my blessing? I'm glad he did. I'd have got a little disappointed. Wouldn't you? Now, when I was here before, I shared something that was really serious to me. Uh, and I, I think if y'all, some of y'all that were here, most of y'all probably were here, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but I, I imagine that you would, uh, you would understand that we went through a really hard time. And I started off talking about it and, uh, and it, how, how much it was serious to me and all that. <clears throat> but I want you to, I'm, I'm going to start off in, in the, uh, I think, almost the same place. Uh, because I have something to share with you that's going to, I think, will help you. Because, you see, after there's a war... There's always an aftermath. Y'all ever noticed that before? You ever paid attention? There's always cleanup. There's always the wake of destruction. There's those things that, that uh, happen that you wish would have never happened, but they did. And now you got all this cleanup. And, uh, and it, it, even, even during the aftermath of all these wars and things that go on in your, life, in your personal lives, it's the same way. You're very vulnerable after you fought. Do y'all know that? Uh, I used to be a street fighter. You probably don't know that. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. But I was delivered. I'm really enjoying that too. Uh, but after we always fought, I was always tired, hurt, wounded, offended, wanting to, if we lost, I wanted to retaliate, but I was too tired, too weak, too wore out. And, and you know, in, in this war we went through, went through uh, I got a little bit discouraged afterwards. I got a little bit, uh, I got ornery because I just didn't want it. I, I, did, I didn't think it should have happened in the first place. But now that makes you real vulnerable to making mistakes. Are y'all, is this, is it all right if I just keep sharing my heart with you and be honest with you? <clears throat> uh, now I want you to turn with me to Zechariah. I'm pretty sure I shared this with you in June, but I, I want to go back there and, and, and start again. Not, hopefully it won't be as, 
Well, I know it won't. There, there are some things. Look, since I've seen y'all, I've been in a couple of countries besides the United States, and I've had myself a pretty good time. Uh, I went down to Mexico and got my daughter. Uh, she would spent several months down in central Mexico just becoming a woman, uh, meaning away from me and her mother. She's a woman now, you know, she's coming off it and fixing to be in college and all, and uh, we're blessed. Uh, but she needed to grow up outside of the house, so she, we let her go for a few months. Uh, and boy, it, you know what happened to her? This is the girl that God healed so dramatically back last year. Uh, she, she went to Mexico and I was thoroughly, there was no way that I was gonna lose her to rebellion or anything, it was just not possible. Uh, I just don't believe it. Uh, but whenever I would call, I, I was so blessed. I called down there early in the morning because that's, I'm usually traveling uh, after 6.30 or so. And so I have to call about 5.30. And I called down into Mexico and uh, my daughter answered the phone almost every time I called. You know what she was doing? What in the world would a 17-year-old Brother Jack be doing up at 5 o'clock in the morning? You know what she was doing? She was seeking Jesus. Isn't that nice? I really appreciate what God's doing in my family. I really appreciate that, that my teenage children, uh, what they've learned from my wife and I, what they've learned is to seek God is the right way. And when, I, when they get out on their own is where they start living what they've learned from you. Now, they're gonna go out there and they're gonna try their wings and they're gonna make some mistakes. They're gonna, there's lots of things gonna happen out there as they really come into adulthood. You know that, I know that as well as you do. But it, it blesses me tremendously that, that my kids, God has taught us somehow or another uh, uh, leaving the United States when, when everybody, Crystal was this big, a little bit brand new baby. Uh, but all through her growing up life now and Jody's life now uh, and these other two that we have, their, their lives, when they leave us, they continue. Somehow or another, we're doing something that's happening that's in a positive way. They're continuing from where, we, where they left us. They, they're going on and growing from there. And I am thoroughly blessed with that report. That is an amazing to me report to be able to tell y'all. And while I was down there, uh, just go to Zechariah 3 in verse, verse 1, and I want you to look at this. I want you to see this is a very important passage of Scripture to me. I may share it with you next time I come here. Probably the next 50 times. I, if I'm... Still, I'm allowed to. But Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1 is very important. It'll always be important to you. Every day you wake up, it's important to you. It's important to me when things are, like right now, things are running well. Our work has been trimmed down uh, uh, in lots of ways. But, but what God's doing, I, I, I just am impressed with what the Holy Ghost can do with people that'll let him work. The dead are still raised. Uh, I hope y'all don't get bored with me. Every time I come here, I say this. I, <laughs> blinded eyes are still open. Lame are still walking. I don't have a different report. And I don't apologize. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Zechariah 3.1. The Lord showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, comma. Does y'all's Bible say the same thing mine does? Is there a comma there or what's next? What's next is something we don't like to talk about. But what we've got to talk about, church, and realize that God's with us, period. He's a real God. You can taste and feel him. Look around you. Go out and eat a blueberry. You just ate some of God. You tasted God. He's in the blueberries. He's in raspberries. I love raspberries. and I know they're from God. <laughs> Bad as I hate celery, I still know God's in the celery thing. 
Deb and I ordered something today. I think it was called buffalo wings or something. Y'all call them up here. Really good. I ordered the inferno ones, which means the, that, that word in Spanish means hell, okay? <laughs> so I figured we was close to something I eat in Mexico if I'd get them, and it was all right. <laughs> but we changed the celery sticks to carrot sticks. Because I know God's in the carrot stick. <laughs> I'm still being convinced he's in the celery stick. <laughs> okay. But look. The day I run across this, I was impressed to find out that this man, high priest of God, Joshua, was standing there and the angel of the living God was there, the glory of God was there, comma. There's a comma. There was somebody else there. And I, I'm not going to address him very much, I just want, but I do want you to realize that the demon forces of hell are standing there also. It's our opportunity or our choice, our decision, which way we're going to go with this deal. Every time the opposition comes up, it's still our opportunity whether we're going to go with Jesus, which is in the carrot sticks, or are you going to go in the salad, or, or whether we're going to go with the with the devil. It is, it's our opportunity. My son Jody, who I, of course I love the boy, he's, I don't, I, I always talk about him, but tonight, as, as I'm up here tonight in y'all's great church, my son Jody's down in a hut, uh, 7.30, they're fixing to the start service about eight o'clock. And he's preaching his second sermon today, and he's been out there on horseback for over a week now. Out in the woods, village to village, preaching two times a day. You know, you, and right now things in Mexico are a little bit unstable uh, politically. If anybody's keeping up with it, you understand what I'm saying. Um, I get asked quite often, how is it that you can send your, your, your favorite, I mean, and Jody is my favorite son, he's my eldest. How can you send that boy into a situation that you know is volatile? How is that possible, church? Oh, that's easy, Brother David. Jesus, send yours. Oh, well, uh, we better pray. Ha, how about that? Isn't that funny how the Bible changes? Just one question. It's possible because with all the to-do of the devil and the uh, likes going on in our political systems and the, in our country, all the, the killings and the, the, the pistols and the guns and the violence that's taking place, uh, everything that's going on all around, all over the world, it's that way. All over the world, it's that way. I have to believe that God is with us. I have to believe that it doesn't matter, like you were singing a while ago, that great song. That's a wonderful song. That's, that's the way I live, this song here. It doesn't matter if the river's rising or the mountain's falling. We will be delivered. I believe it. I believe it. It doesn't make any difference if the communists are there. It doesn't make any difference if they're going to shoot. It doesn't matter. Do you get it? It matters that God's there. I was over in uh, inner city, Indianapolis here uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. I don't remember when it was. A couple of weeks ago. And we had a blessed time. We was over there with a small church working inner city work. We passed out myself. I brought up 12 of our missionaries and, and we brought up, uh, uh, we passed out 35,000 tracks in five days. Pretty nice. Had a whole bunch of people saved. There was uh, 60, 70 people born again in a, just a few days out there, inner city people going to the crack houses, going to all these places, uh, just preaching Jesus, 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 Jesus. We had everybody, everybody must hear the gospel. 
And out there, I brought my 17-year-old crystal. I gave her a handful of tracks, a little uh, booty pouch, filled it up with tracks. I said, go get them. We were in rough, rough terrain. There's no difference where we were in inner city Indianapolis than the, than the jungles of Mexico. There's probably more guns where we were in Indianapolis than that where, I, where I live at the communist house. Okay? I sent her out there, you go down this street, girl, I'm going down this street. She had a, a, a young teenager that was with her, a young girl, and I had, of course, a, a, man, a man. We went this way. All of a sudden, I hear her screaming. She comes running, running, screaming, hollering up to me. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Whew, I'm running, buddy. She's jumping up and down, up and down, up and down. I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it, daddy, I did it. What in the world did you do, girl? I led my first person to Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Do you see the difference, what I'm trying to tell you? If you, if you grow up in that atmosphere, but knowing that the devil's standing there, but so is the angel of God. Knowing that the presence of God is there. Yeah, the opposition is there, but God's there. Do you hear me? And my daughter, she's, she's still bubbling about it. First thing she'd tell you if you started talking to her. I led somebody to Jesus, my first one. I, they didn't know nothing about God. I told them about Jesus and they said yes. And she got born again and she was my age and now she's not going to hell. She's going to heaven with me. Oh, that's so nice. Daddy, daddy, daddy. I've never seen her that excited. Not even the day she got healed, she wasn't that excited. That's nice. Isn't that nice that my daughter's excited about getting somebody born again more than she is Debbie's new pair of shoes? I like that. That's God. The devil's there, God's there. Our opportunity, our choice, who we're gonna believe. Colossians chapter, uh, I think it's one, yeah. Y'all don't let me forget to go to Philippians, or, or yeah, Philippians, will you? What did I tell you? Colossians. I was stopped one day by some federal cops. They're drug lords. They're looking for drug people, and they're, they're, there's no way that we can be in the territory we're in because they grow a lot of drugs where we live. They just cannot believe that all we're there to do is just simply open our Bible and preach Jesus to a couple of poor people and hopefully they'll get born again and help them and God will, God will give up. They cannot believe that's the way it is. They cannot receive that that's right. Well, really, that's all my life is, just preach to a couple of poor people, hopefully they'll get born again. They can't believe that, especially with the vehicle I drive around. It's the best there is in the world. But these people stopped me. They turned me around emphatically. You cannot go down this road again. It's a good thing to know the territory. It's a good thing to have a truck that can swim. It's a good thing to have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you tell them, fellas, I really appreciate y'all's jobs. You know, you're doing a great job. Y'all have a nice day. You get your paperwork's back, you put them all up, you turn that truck around, wave at them, you go down until you get out of sight, and you take a cow trail. <laughs> Horse trail. You get up to the river. Oh, shuckets. Three, four feet deep. What are we going to do? I view any obstacle that stops me from going to church as an obstacle from the devil, regardless of whether it's a river, a federal agent, or anything else. Anything that impairs me from doing what we believe is the will of God is from the devil. Whether it's a natural obstacle, hurricanes, mountains falling down on you, doesn't make any difference. It must be moved. So you get out and you lock those tires in on that four-wheel drive. You get in and you put it in four-wheel drive. You roll your windows up real tight. <laughs>
Turn the air conditioner up. Punch in the praise tape. Does this sound familiar to y'all? <laughs> then you go to Burger King. No, there isn't one. <laughs> Slip that thing into low range. And you say, God, I'm not misusing this vehicle. I'm really not. You place this river here, it's a benefit to lots of people. I appreciate that water flowing through that river. And I appreciate you letting me drive across the top of it in Jesus' name. You put that thing in first gear, you go down. I didn't drive across the top. But I got something that's just, to me it's just as good. It's a, any of you in here that are mechanics will understand what I'm fixing to say. I got a submarine truck. It happened, Brother Jack. You say, I don't believe that. I know you wasn't in there with me, having me have faith to get across. I know you don't believe. That's why you're not there. <laughs> That's why I'm there, because I do believe. Shut up. <laughs> See, I got a little bitty, it's only two little, it's only about 10 little miracles I got to tell you all about. And I'm telling you one that's not even on the list, so. So what is it like to be submerged in a truck? Very lonely. What about you fellas, that, all y'all that understand how combustion engines work, they have to have oxygen. And if you're underwater, listen, this is not just up to the tires, up to the hood. This is, we're under. It's, I saw water here and over there too. Out there and back here. So in my opinion, we were submerged. <laughs> So that means submarine truck. I don't have any idea why God lets me do this stuff, but I sure do appreciate it. Cause I sure will bail off into it. My foot was almost mashing a dent in the floor trying to push that accelerator. Those big old gumbo mutters were pawing ground under that river. And the next thing I know, it looked like a, it really looked like a movie. I mean, all of a sudden you, the, 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 you see light better, you know, and it just peels away and there's a bright sunshine again. And you're on the other side and you don't have a drowned out truck. Isn't that something? Colossians chapter one, verse, verse eight. You know why I had to get there? Two re well, actually there were three reasons. There was a woman that they had sent me some messages. There was a lady in one of our churches that had epilepsy, really bad, it was severe, it was, it was rough. She would have a couple of seizures a day, two or three, sometimes more than that. And she was just constantly in pain and there's no help for those people at all. And I had to get there to pray for her because she had gone into a, she, she wasn't coming out of the seizure. seizure. Uh, I think it was a coma, I believe. Uh, Y'all know more about it than I do. But she had gone into a seizure and she had left and become unconscious. I think it was a coma. And so they told me to come. And also there was a family that had been gone for a long time that got back and they told me I had to get there because there was a baby and a woman that had tuberculosis and they were both not expected to live. So those are valid reasons to swim my truck across the river. Those are valid reasons to disobey federal agents. To me, those are reasons that, that, that push me, compel me, that, that draw me, that I can't rest until I've completed what I feel like God told me to do, all right? 
If it me, what if I had lost my truck? Would it have been worth it to go and lay hands on those people and save their life? You evaluate it. To me, it's worth it. A truck can be replaced. A life can't. I don't have a bad attitude. In other words, these vehicles God gives me, I take, it, I take real good care of them. I don't like to make submarines out of my truck, but there's been twice that I've had to do it. And we got out the other side and I, I, I stopped. Water was running out of every crack in that truck. I raised the hood and the breather had water sign right to it, but not over it. Isn't that something? So you go, you lay hands on these people. Look at verse eight of Colossians chapter one. It says, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. See, the devil is standing here. God's here. God's give us his message. God's filled us with his presence. God's allowed us to walk in glory and honor that few humans get to experience what we do as Christians. Yeah, life is rough. I came here and explained to y'all how rough it was. Uh, since I've seen y'all, we've had a couple more bounces. Jesus is King and Lord. The love in the Spirit is what compels me, what drives me. How do I know, how do I know confronting these federal agents, confronting this river, how do I know that God's with me? How do I, wh why jump in? What makes you know God's with you? How do you know that? What is the sign, if there is one, that lets you know that? Uh, uh, when you're standing in front of those agents, anybody that's traveled abroad, you understand what it's like the fear, the deception, the, the traps of the enemy that come, come in your mind and start beginning to tear down your faith and attack your shield of faith and try to rip you all apart because they, they make you feel like you're wrong whether you are or not. And then you obey them and say, okay, I'm going home, which is not a lie, but it'll just be a few hours later than they thought. It's not a lie, I will go home, but it's just not right now. And so you go hit that river and it's deeper than you thought. It's wider than you thought. You didn't remember it that way because it was a couple of rainy seasons ago before you, you know, that you rode your horse across that horse trail and it, didn't, it wasn't quite that way. <laughs> and after a couple of rainy seasons, anything can happen. The love of the Spirit of God, it is God for me. When I hear of the people God sent me to, that need me, it's God to get there. The moment I hear the word that I'm needed in a certain place, what happens between that moment and getting there are immaterial to me. <laughs> it don't make any difference. It don't matter how much money I have to get through to get there, it don't matter how many vehicles, it doesn't make any difference how many people it costs to get there to save the people. It's the love of the Spirit of God, knowing that even though the compelling evil is there, so is the mighty Holy Ghost. Do you hear me? Any one of you people in here, me, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. Anybody in here understands that, man, we come, we have some wonderful services, but we go right out those doors, and there he is waiting on us. But I'm gonna tell you this right now. Slap him and keep on walking. He's a liar. Have you ever seen a baby eat up with tuberculosis? It's incredible. Uh, I can't describe it to you. Verse nine, for this cause we also, since the day we, we, we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you can be feel. Did you realize that I desire that everybody I talk to understands and has knowledge and, and retains knowledge of what I'm saying because I'm saying stuff without saying stuff. 
There's no time to, to explain every detail. There's just not. But look, it says, desire that you can be filled with knowledge of, of his will. It is the will of God to go and to help that baby with tuberculosis. It is the will of God to go and help that mama with tuberculosis. It is the will of God to go and lay my hand on that lady in a coma with epilepsy. It's the will of God. So while y'all decide whether it's wisdom or not, I'm going. It's the will of God. Do you hear? The knowledge of his will and wisdom and spiritual understanding. Look at verse 10. Everybody in this room, there's no doubt in my mind, all of us want to walk worthy of the Lord. <laughs> to walk worthy of the Lord, you have to cross rivers, you have to deal with federal agents, and you have to not let nothing stop you from doing the will of God. Doesn't matter what their names are. There are obstacles from hell stopping you from doing the will of God. Are y'all listening to me? Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, with patience and long suffering. See, there we are. Verse 11 explains it all. What we want is in verse 11. We want to be strengthened with all of his might, don't we? Don't we? Don't we want to be filled with his glorious power? Well, you've got to learn how to allow the patience of the Holy Ghost to come through you. And even though there's an obstacle here, don't let that stop you. Don't let any devil talk you out of saying, well, this might have been, uh, I, must, I might have been missing, God might be detaining me for a, for a higher purpose. That's a devil stopping you from doing the perfect will of God. Patience and long suffering with joyfulness. It's not easy as I make it sound to jump in that river with my four wheel drive. You think that's hard, you should see what it's like to jump in a river with a, with a 600 XR600R. I'm serious, total submerged motorcycle can run underwater. If you've got the Holy Ghost. I'm serious. It's another story. Verse 12, after you've been filled with all of his might and his glorious power and the patience and long suffering with joyfulness is, is just permeating your being. You, these obstacles are trying to stop you and it, it, you're going and you're going to do it in, 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 anyhow and you get there, oh boy, and you get there and you walk up and, and my truck is still dripping, <laughs> oozing water from ever, everywhere. I'm going to have to change my rear differential, my front differential, my transmission, my transfer case. That's okay with me. I don't mind changing oil and all that stuff. I don't mind changing oil in my engine. You know why? Because of verse 12. Do you know what it's like to walk up to a hut where a woman is in a coma, laying there almost, she's almost dead, they just can't get her. And I don't know what, I'm not a physician, I don't know what the right things are to do. But I do know Jesus. And I do know what it's like to walk in that hut and that woman's laying there, she's quivering. And lay your hands on that brow and you say, you demon from the pit of hell, I've been sent here by the Holy Ghost. See, the demon knows what I went through to get there. The family and the lady don't know anything about it. I'm not going to go in there crying and belly aching about how hard it was to get there. I'm going to walk in there and do what I'm supposed to do in verse 12, giving thanks to the Father. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> for letting me be the one to lay hands on her. <laughs> 
I'm glad I was there. I'm glad I didn't let a federal agent or a river stop me now. I'm glad I went ahead and dove in. I'm glad I listened. Because whenever you lay hands on her in the name of Jesus, you epileptic devil, I curse you by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I give thanks to God who has made me able or fit or to be a partaker of the inheritance. Now, God, I give part of my inheritance to this girl. Jesus' name be healed. God smiled and says, it ain't yours to give, it's mine, boy. And he looks down at me and says, I'm glad you went too, David. Get up, girl. She flies up from there, healed. Huh? <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, it's getting worth it, isn't it? All of a sudden, all the sweating and all the, all the rusty parts you're gonna have to take apart and redo, all the bearings, everything you gotta redo to, cause the water got in the front end, and that's okay. It's really okay. Because God's with me, even underwater. Giving thanks to the Father who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13, who has delivered us from what? I'll guarantee you the demon is gonna be everywhere you step your foot, but so is Jesus, trust him. So is Jesus, trust him, because you go right out of that thing, that hut, we had a miracle, the family is flabbergasted, so am I. We walk right out of there, and we walk into another hut, and there's a woman laying there rasping. Just like that. Easy to discern who's got tuberculosis. And you go and fall down over the top of her on your hands and knees because you just cannot believe the devastation this disease is bringing to these people. It makes me mad. I don't like it. And you ask God for mercy. And then you get up and you turn around and there's a mama. The mama of the lady you just prayed for is holding this skeleton. This little baby. You take that little baby in your arms. <laughs> And all of a sudden, it don't matter how deep that river was or how big those gun barrels were on those federal ages. You just walk around now. And you just say, God, thank you. Yeah. It really is that easy. You just take that baby and you're walking around now and you're saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you're saying, God, if I've got any life in me at all, put it in this kid. Anything I touch prospers. Did y'all know that? I'm a life-giving force in the earth. It doesn't make any difference how human I am because I am a human, I'm full of mistakes, just like you are. But I'm also a man of God Almighty. I've also been delivered from the power of darkness. I also am filled with the inheritance of the saints in light. I'm also filled with the anointing of God. I'm also a problem for every devil I've ever met. <laughs> Including tuberculosis demons including epilepsy devils. In the name of Jesus, take that thing right over there, that baby right back to that grandma and you say, have a nice day. And you walk out, you think you're gonna get in your truck and go on to preach. <laughs> Not so, the first family over there that had the miracle, come here. So you go back over there and you gotta eat a meal with them. So you sit down and you eat. You get up. Gonna go to church now. Uh-uh, family just left. You gotta go there to eat now. So you eat twice there, you get in your truck, you, which is just a few minutes on down the road to the church. You get there and the pastor has you a meal. So you're really blessed, see? By getting there, you get blessed. Verse 13, who hath delivered us from the powers of darkness hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now. Real quick, because I forgot to see what, what's when we got going here. But real quick here, I want you to look at verse 14. 
And I want you to read that verse for the rest of your life. You memorize this verse? It doesn't make any difference if the devil's there. It matters that we've got redemption. You have been redeemed. You are redeemed. You are freed from the curse. Do you hear me? You have so much freedom in you. You have so much of the authority of God in you that you can walk around giving it to everybody that'll take it. You have way more than an abundant need to give. There's not a devil that can stop what you've got. There's no one that can't invent one big enough. Just the other day, I was over in Camden, New York, preaching. And this little lady comes walking down there. She's an elderly woman, had cataract surgery several times. We laid hands on her, boom, she went flying over yonder. She got up, same condition as she come there. But in the morning when she got up, <laughs> in the morning when she got up, she opened her eyes. You ever done that before? Just open your eyelids in the morning and the sun rays, you take it for granted. You run quick and close the blinds. Hurt your eyes. Unless you haven't seen it for years. <laughs> Then you go to this window and you cry and you weep and tell God, thank you. Thank you. That little old grandma got healed. Those cataracts banished from her eyes by the name of Jesus. Isn't that nice? I like that. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood. I've been redeemed. What about you? I've been delivered. What about you? Yes, the enemy is there. I do not ignore that. I'll be the first one to tell you. Do you know the devil's standing there by you? I'm the first one that'll say it. See the devil, he's standing there. And now my next statement will be, what a great opportunity for faith. Let's go for it. Y'all, this is honestly serious, all right? When I left that church that night there in, there in Mexico, I had to make a choice whether I was gonna go back and cross that river and it had been another submarine truck or I was gonna go back and face those feds. We decided to go back and face the feds. They weren't there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just, oh, see when that happens, you reach over and turn that air up another little notch. Turn that knob up on that speaker, on, on that praise music. Put that foot into it because you're tired now. You're ready to go home. God's done his job. But the next time I went out to that village, y'all, pastor told me that there was somebody who wanted me to have a special meal with him. I said, that's fine, let's go. I go walking over there with him. We got to this house. It was the place where the Lady had the tuberculosis and the little baby had tuberculosis. I go walking in there and it was one of the most elegant Indian meals I've ever been to. I mean, there was more pride and tradition put into that meal. Probably one of the best places, one of the best times I've ever had with Indians. <clears throat> I mean, everything was exactly according to Indian tradition. And I know every jot and tittle of it, so I hang in there with them all the way. It's pretty neat. I didn't know, I had no idea who the lady was that was serving us. She's healthy, she's got, she's not fat, but she's healthy. She's got meat on her bones, muscles have come back. And after the meal was all said and done, she brought this little girl in there. And she sat down across the table from me. And she said, how was the meal? I said, it was excellent, thank you. She said, I'm the lady who had the tuberculosis. This is the baby that had the tuberculosis. We know that it's nothing, but we wanted to give you a small token of gratitude and fix you a meal and thank you for coming here and sparing our lives. <laughs> I said, excuse me, I had nothing to do with it. She said, I understand that you won't take any of the credit. She said, because you have taught all the people and they've been telling me that we have to give all honor to God. She said, but I also saw in the Bible where it's right to give honor to the man of God. 
I said, I receive it in Jesus' name. Be blessed. The baby and the lady, the next day, the tuberculosis started remitting. It started leaving their bodies. In less than a week, they were back up to eat normal food. And then within a week after that, they were eating normal portions. And of course, the body started recovering. And they were healed of tuberculosis. And it hasn't come back. And guess what else? The girl with the, with, the, with, the, with the epilepsy was delivered and it never came back. Isn't that nice? Look, real, real quick here. Let's run through a couple of scriptures. I want you to look with me over at John chapter 3 and verse 15. There's a verse I want to show you. Y'all probably never heard this verse in your life. But I want to read it to you. John chapter 3 and verse 15. The Bible says that whosoever believeth in Jesus should not perish but have eternal life. I've got eternal life beaten in me. Do you get it yet? Do you understand that? Do you understand that you are a threat and you're a problem to every devil? It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the circumstances or the obstacles. Jesus is King and Lord always. Even my son tonight in communist territory, he's fine. Do you get it? All the doubts you can have won't stop what God's going to do through my son. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Verse 16. God loves the world tonight, just like he did back in June, just like he did a thousand years ago, just like he will a thousand years from now if Jesus don't come back. You got to get this church. You have no right to barely ache and complain. It's all right to be a human. It's all right to understand and have attitude and have characteristics that are not godless. Sometimes, listen, I said that meaning you can't stop from being a human. Did you hear me? But you can stop the demons that cause it. And that'll start making you perfect toward Jesus. Is that making any sense? Or am I confusing everybody? I, hope I, I don't want to confuse somebody. See, look, I, the, one of my pastor's wives had a little baby and it was stillborn. Uh, and so they sent me word of it and I went out there and I just knew. I know this guy. We've been together for years. I just knew I get there, God's going to raise this baby from the dead. I had total confidence that we're going to get another miracle here. We didn't. We prayed. We sought God. We diligently, other ministers in our work came in and started coming in from all over the mountains. Before it was over, we had pretty good entourage. There was a group of us there that we believed God. We always believed God. We win. That night, we lost. We have two problems. We have a dead baby. We have a mama who hasn't passed all the afterbirth who is bleeding profusely. She's just... Boy, she's embarrassed. <clears throat> she's dying. <laughs> so everybody's looking for, to me for the answer as to why the baby's not getting raised from dead and why the mama's dying. This man here is not in sin. What's going on? I'll tell you this right now. Be honest with you, I'm not God. I don't have any idea. So I just flat out told him, I have no idea what's going on here. What say let's bury the baby and pray for the mama? No, that's not what we want to do, Brother David. We want the baby back. So do I. I'll pray with you as long as you want to. I'll believe with you. If God don't raise that baby by daylight, we're going to bury that baby and we're going to save mama. There is nowhere to take her to the hospital. <clears throat> There's not one. So the baby, God didn't raise the baby from the dead. Uh, I don't know why. I wish I could tell you all these answers. I really do. wish I could. The mama was tearing, the, the weight of that afterbirth was tearing her uterus wall. She was bleeding, it was, it was bad, and we were praying and asking God for mercy and grace, and we was, uh, <clears throat> we was really needing a miracle for her too. And the, the, the pastor who's, who had lost his baby looked me right in the face and said, I must be gonna lose my wife too. Well, in the light of the way things look, 
He may have a pretty objective answer there. She's almost dead by the blood. She's, she's, we lost the baby already. Things are definitely not in our favor at the moment. And we prayed some more and more and we called out, we got scriptures, we read hundreds, even thousands of scripture verses and we sought the Lord for hours upon hours. The bleeding slowed down, but it didn't stop. So I told the pastors, I said, this is what I'm gonna do. The ones of you that can stay here, we're gonna fast for three days. If she's still alive at three days, I'll be back. I'll be back whether she is or not. But I've got to go, I've got other things to do also. <clears throat> I've got other, other people like her that need me to come by. And she said, they said, okay. So the, the, there were, I think there were five pastors that stayed. The rest of them went back to their, their hike back to their villages. I went about my being, my, my thing. And all along the road, all the churches that, that were in our group, I asked them all to pray and fast these three days. Got back home, all, got organized all the Americans. <clears throat> so we set into fasting and we fasted for three days straight. And I go back out there the third evening uh, and I drive up and I get and I hike in. And, and I get there, and the wife of the husband meets me at the door, totally healed. It was really something. The, the, at 48 hours from the time that we started the fast, at 48 hours, she began to f feel something moving inside of her. Uh, and, and, and I guess God was doing surgery, I guess. And, and it... Uh, before I got there that morning, it was daylight of the third day, uh, she passed the rest of that afterbirth and, and uh, the bleeding stopped and she was healed. Now these things are, to me, very awesome. I mean, they're, they're, they're everyday life that we live in the gospel. It happens every day in the body of Christ and we give up because of a, of a prior problem that that sets us back and because of the, the war and the fallout of the war, we believe we must lose the whole war. That's not true. I must encourage you tonight. You can overcome it all in Jesus' name because the Bible says we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord. It says, for God so loved the world. Uh, salvation, y'all all know this. Salvation is deliverance. It's health. It's, it's, it's being saved from hell. It means we have a defender. Uh, according to uh, uh, Psalms chapter 84, God is our defense, our rock, our shield, and our buckler. When the enemy does break through some of our defenses, and, and it looks like we are being routed and, and hurt and destroyed, you must stand up and slap him right in the face. Spit right in his eye. Pfft. No more. You have to. He will take you out and destroy you if you allow it. But through Jesus, we may lose a skirmish or two, but I'll guarantee you, ultimately, we win the war. Did you hear me? Are y'all listening to this? This is good preaching. I, I want you to look over here at, at Psalms 34. And I'm going to hurry with this because I want to read you something out of the Amplified Bible here in just a second. Uh, Psalms 34. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Psalms 34 and verse 12. What man is he that desires life and loves many days? Me. <laughs> That's me. Okay. That he may see good. Me. I want to see good. I want to walk wherever I go, regardless of the obstacles, I want to go and see good. I, I, Y'all, I was in a, we, we had a, I was invited to a whole bunch of churches. There are churches, but they're forever out there in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's, listen. I, I, I can't wait till I get home in December uh, after going to New Zealand, Australia here. I'm, I'm excited about getting home because I'm going to the furthest extreme of our work and I'm just going to hang out with those Indians for several weeks. My wife are in agreement already about it and I'm so excited I can't sleep at night. Just 
going out there hiking 12, 14 hours and getting to one of our villages, eat, eat supper with them, preach to them, spend the night with them, get up in the morning, hike again, preach day in, day out. Day in. And I was doing that one time and, and y'all, it's, it's devastating what you can find out there. There are so many demons at work while we're at home sleeping. You gotta go to war against the devil. You have to. You've got to seek after good. You got to learn how to be good. You got to learn how to do good. You got to be a good distributor. Keep your tongue from evil. That's a way to do it. Keep your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil. Don't go with evil. Go with good. It's your choice. Do good, seek peace, pursue after it. I was walking down through there and it had been several days. I, was, this was, I had planned to be out there for, for 18 days. Ended up, we, we got all the work done in 16 and I'm happy about that. But we was going along and I run across, listen, in, in 15 days of ministry, two, two to sometimes three times a day, going out there, we ran into three people that were dead that God raised from the dead. That's doing good. Three, that had she not gone on the trip, they'd have died and been buried more than likely and, and they would have forever missed their opportunity to do good with you. There were over 175 people born again in these days I was out there. There was, I don't know how many miracles, really, Good stuff, lame walking, blinded eyes opening, people that's got cancers, people that's got uh, 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 jungle rot, uh, what is it, it's like leprosy, and people with leprosy being healed. Yeah, that's doing good. You think if you're gonna go out there and do good, you're not gonna run into some opportunities to, for faith? There's gonna be demon opposition. But that's what it's all there for. That's why you're so well trained, is to fight it and win. You've got to realize that, church. You must realize that. Look, look here. Let's do a Bible course. Where is Nehemiah? Who knows where Nehemiah is? I do. Go there. Nehemiah chapter 8. Look at the bottom of verse 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm happy. That's why the devil's mad at me. I seek peace. That's why the devil's mad at me. I do good. That's why he wants to take me apart. I know he's there. That's why he's mad at me. Because I don't act like he's not there. I address him every day. You foul devil of hell, the Lord rebuke you out of my way. He don't like that. Jesus does. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It's fun to me to go out there all those days and nights hiking and doing without and getting skinny and walking and fasting and all these obstacles. That's, I enjoy it. Just like you enjoy sitting at home with your TV changer. <laughs> I could have went all night without saying that. First Peter chapter one, read something to you. Let's go over there quick. When I was a little Baptist boy, we used to do these things called Bible drills. I'm there, are you there yet? First Peter chapter one. I wasn't ever the winner, but I'll beat you tonight. First Peter chapter one, verse three. <laughs> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten unto us again a lively hope from the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus is not on that crucifix around your neck. Jesus is not in that little box with straw y'all put down at Christmas time. 
Jesus is not in some tomb. Jesus is not in some glass-covered Catholic in some tabernacle somewhere. Jesus is risen from the dead. Hallelujah! Yes! And he lives in me! And I'm a lively hope. I'm very much alive. And that makes the devil mad and it makes me happy that he's mad. There's, there's a lots of different things that'll make you happy. There's one thing that makes me happy that the devil's spitting cotton because he can't stop us. It makes him furious and that makes me so glad. Look at verse eight. Who having not seen, we, you love. In whom now, uh, now you see him not yet believing. I believe. Do you believe? Not long ago, I was holding this little baby covered in pus, had these sores all over it, and we prayed for it, and you know, pus and goo's all over you. What is it like when God heals somebody? Get your eyes out of the goo and into Jesus. Believe, rejoice. Jesus is in the goo with me. Though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and filled with the glory of God. All those demons are there. So is Jesus. <laughs> at one of the meetings we was at the other day, there was a lady come into that thing. She drove for several hours. These people brought her down there. They couldn't do nothing with her. She's contemplating suicide. She never heard the gospel spoke to her directly. Preached Jesus to her. I'll tell you what, the lady that come up there somehow or another, I saw her out there and asked her to come get saved. She ran up there, and I mean through tears, she got born again. That demon spirit that was wanting her to commit suicide was cast out and off of her, and she was delivered, and she got filled with the Holy Ghost. Isn't that something? That's fascinating to me. It's the joy unspeakable and filled with glory. We've got to walk in the joy of the Lord. Look, let me read something to you in closing. Uh, uh, over here, who, who's, who's got an Amplified Bible in here? Anybody? Whole bunch of you. Y'all make sure I'm telling the truth so these other people won't think I'm lying to them. Philippians chapter one, verse 25. Philippians 1, 25. I'll tell you, this is, this is the whole ball of wax, buddy. This is all of it in a nutshell right here. This is it. I almost fell down when I read this. I think I did. I think I did. I really did. I fell down right out of my chair. I'm serious. I could not believe it was in the Bible. I couldn't believe it was described like this. I really couldn't. I just couldn't believe it. To this, to this day, I still am, I am amazed it's in here. Look at this, Philippians chapter 2, I mean chapter 1, verse 25. I am convinced. Do y'all believe I'm convinced? Y'all know I'm convinced. What I'm trying to do is get you convinced. I am convinced of this. I know that I, that I shall remain and stay by you all to promote your progress and joy in believing. That's the reason I come to you. Do you understand that? I have a purpose in my life. So do you. It doesn't matter if that demon thing is standing there. It matters that God's standing there. You can't renege. You can't back out. It doesn't matter how big he grows. It matters how big God is in you. <sighs> so that in me you may have abundant cause for exaltation and glory in Christ Jesus through my coming to you again. Now verse 27 starts a series of verses that I find absolutely amazing. It says, only be sure, and I've got to somehow convince all of us that we've got to realize the seriousness of the, of the situation. We allow little demon spirits to come up there and they're not very big at first, but we don't deal with them. And they start growing. And in a minute they start trying to take over our entire house and ministries and lives. You can't allow it, we gotta understand who we are. I am a citizen of the Most High God. 
kingdom of heaven is my home. The devil does not have the right to fool with me like he's been doing. I've got to slap his face every time I can. <laughs> You've got to conduct your manner of life worthy of the good news, the gospel of Christ, so that whether I do come and see you or am absent, I may hear this of you that you're standing. Now here's where we, what we've, we've got to do this, Brother Jack, we've got to. The only reason I'm still in the field, it's not because I'm better than anybody I went with, it's because I somehow stumbled on doing this right. I'm serious. I'm not any better than anybody else. But somehow or another, I bounced around out there and did a few things right and heard God a few times. We can do it. If I can do it, I know you can. We got to stand firm in what we believe and how we act. We can't let anything make us slide off. We can't compromise regardless. It says right here in my Bible, this Amplified Bible, it says here, uh, where does it say it? That you're standing firm in united spirit and purpose, striving side by side and contending with a single mind for the faith of the glad tidings, the gospel. What do you reckon it feels like to those people when I get there and they're dying and you touch them and they get healed? What do you reckon it feels like to me when you jump in a river and make, and make a truck a submarine? What do you reckon it feels like to me whenever my son gets caught by the Reds and I, I fully well believe I'm gonna have to go in undercover and, and me and some of my Indian brothers are gonna have to go and sneak him out of their camp. What does it feel like to me when he opens the door to my, I get home in Mexico and, he, and I have this big door on our house and he opens that big steel door and it's him standing there going, hello, Pop. What does that feel like to me inside? <laughs> I'm glad I stood firm in united purpose and spirit. I'm glad I didn't let it slip. I'm glad I didn't let this great salvation of the Holy Ghost slip away from me even for a moment. I'm glad I've been serious. I'm glad I didn't compromise all these years now because it's paying off in big ways. Look at verse 28, 28. Do not even for a moment. This is astounding. <laughs> Do you realize how much a moment is? That was a moment when I shut my eyes and opened. That's not very much time. But we allow demons to control us and manipulate us for more than a moment. I have you to know that. They may not enter us and possess us, but they manipulate us. We've got to give God the manipulation of our lives. We've got to let God have it. We have to stand up and say, no, devil. We have to quit being intimidated by men and demons. Church, stand up and be counted for God. Do not be for a moment frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponent, your adversaries. Because get this, for such consistency and fearlessness will be a clear sign, seal and proof to them of their impending destruction. Whoa. How do you think them demons felt when they slapped out them, them, them feds in the road? And I turned around and they thought, we whooped him today, he's going home. He told them he's going to the house, which was not a lie. I did go just eight or 10 hours later. Them demons were over there laughing at me. Look at the stupid, he can't even get through a couple of feds. Man of faith and power, so big, so great, he can't even talk his way through a couple of fed, federal agents. What do you think they felt like when I turned in on that river road? They said, look at this idiot. And I get up there and I look at it, I throw the rock in that thing and went, choo, took a stick, <laughs> Them demons said he'll never put that nice truck in there. What did they feel like when I jumped off in that river? Huh? You think they wasn't intimidated a little bit? You think that didn't make them all of a sudden afraid? We can't stop this nut. He 
don't care about nothing. His life's not important. His family, his money, his vehicles, all things important to him is doing what God told him to do. How do you think that felt to them all of a sudden? Now they're hustling, trying to get some other obstacle up. Too late. I'm at the village now. So they come in and hit them, the disease rack people, hard as they can. But too late. You don't touch them now. They lose. It's a sure token and evidence of, of your deliverance and salvation, and that comes from God. Wow. I like it. I really, really like it. You know, they brought a woman from... Uh, uh, on a stretcher, a place called Tancolol. It's one of our Huasteco Indian works. They brought this lady in on a stretcher and she was dead. Didn't tell us she was dead. We thought she was just some kind of real serious sick over there. <laughs> you know, if I was as good as y'all are, I would probably be more attuned to go and check things out. But y'all are not there, so I can't count on y'all telling me how to do it. So I just preached the gospel, and while I was preaching the gospel, this lady sits up over there on that treacher. <clears throat> I didn't know anything about the lady. I thought she was just sick and over there, she got tired of laying down, now she's gonna raise up over a minute and sit up against the wall. That's something in it. That lady was dead. And they brought her in there on a stretcher. And ain't told me or I am impressed that they didn't tell me this. And she stood up, stood up, uh, uh, sit up and leaned up against the wall and was just looking at me. Could you imagine dying in your house of some disease and all of a sudden waking up and listening to me preach? That'd be a fascinating awakening, wouldn't it? But I'll tell you what, this peace that I've got, this ability to somehow be at the right place at the right time for Jesus, this ability to keep my joy regardless of the surrounding circumstances, this ability to walk with, in God, no, God loves me, I tell you. He likes me being a nut. <laughs> he likes me being there. Most Americans don't. God does. <laughs> Verse 29, for you have been granted the privilege. Whew. Well, this is a privilege. To me, I count it a great privilege. This does not annul any kind of faith. Y'all, it doesn't. It's a great honor to run into these obstacles and to suffer and, and to have to go out of my way and to do things. I, I don't like it no more than you would. But I'll tell you this, at least I'm out there trying to do something. That's the least, at least give me that credit. The Bible says, for we have been granted the privilege for Christ's sake, not only to believe, adhere to, rely on, and trust in him, but also to suffer on his behalf. It's a great honor for me to have to go through these great trials because I know, even though I start into them, I really don't know they're great trials when I start them. I don't, I don't, I just, I need more discernment. Pray for me, thank you. <laughs> I didn't know the lady was dead there, but I did see God raising from the dead and that made me very happy. Because in a minute, her husband walked up there and said, thank you. I said, for what? Oh, my wife was dead. Oh, what? I said, I definitely didn't do nothing. You have to thank Jesus, mister. So I went over there and got her by the hand. We got her up there and she was totally healed. She had been, she had been killed by a disease. It was a, a stomach. Uh, they have these uh, parasites and amoebas and things and it killed her and, and uh, but God raised her from the dead and when she come back, she was healed. Uh, those bugs were gone. 
because of Jesus. Isn't that something? The gospel has power. We can rely on it, adhere to it, and trust in it. We can rejoice in it. We can believe it. It's real. Jesus is real. Would you please stand up with me? I appreciate y'all being patient with me. I uh, went for an hour and 17 minutes. I was, I was really clocking it. And I appreciate your time. I really do. Because I've got to drive down to Arkansas tonight. Probably further than most of y'all going to drive. <laughs> to go home. <laughs> Church, listen to me, okay? I thank y'all for letting me come by and shout at y'all all the time. I do. I come up here and rant and rave at you. I have a good time. But I know I'm encouraging you because I know I'm encouraging you we can do more. I know I am. Because I feel it going out of me. I feel power. I feel life. I feel it. I want to tell y'all thank you for, for your, your monthly support. Uh, there are several missionaries out of here. They can all tell you. We can all tell you. Thank you, church. It's not, you say, well, it's, a, it's not as much as we'd like to give. Thank you, church. Uh, nuts like me are hard to come by. <laughs> Isn't that right? You guys know. You leaders, y'all know it. Nuts like me are very hard to come by. And I do appreciate y'all y'all support. I really do. My wife and I, we do. We, we work hard. We really do. And uh, uh, tonight when we leave, I won't see y'all for a couple of years. I'm going to be gone for a while because i got some work to do. I've got to stay in the countries where, where I'm called. And I want y'all to pray because all of a sudden God's expanding our ministry. We're, uh, October the 5th, I'm flying to Australia for three weeks. Uh, I'll be in uh, New Zealand for three weeks, uh, right directly after that in November. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, end of se October, November. And then I'll be in Mexico for four, three or four months. And then we're going directly over to Pakistan. And then into Mongolia at the same time. And then right back over here, we're going right back into South America. I'll be there with my whole family for, for four or five months down in uh, South America in our work. Y'all need to pray for us. We're going to be all over the world preaching Jesus. And I really appreciate y'all being part of it. it. It does make a difference. And we do thank y'all for that, okay? We really do. Because all these people we're touching, you'll never know. I, I forget two-thirds of the stories. Uh, when, when we come up here, I don't ever remember them all. Uh, <clears throat> just stuff that was fascinating to me. Like submarine truck, that's fascinating to me. And, uh, you know, and all these obstacles and things that get in the way. Uh, I really want you to understand something. Our life is difficult where I work. It is, it is hard. Uh, uh, physically, it's a hard, it takes its toll on you. But that, that, that's, that's nothing to me. You, I'll more likely be martyred down there. I'll give my life, I guarantee it. Uh, but it, if you ever do hear it, just say he wanted it. I want to give my life serving Jesus. I want to live to be 200 years old doing it. <laughs> but if it don't happen, so be it. Just find you another nut to encourage you. Amen? <laughs> All right, church, look. Thank you, Jesus. What do we want to do, Pastor? Do we want to give an altar call? You sure? All right, look. I've been having some pretty fun up here in the United States. We're just about through. And uh, I, I got a couple of weeks left. I got a conference up here in Michigan, one couple of them down in the south, and I'm out of here. And uh, I've had myself a blast up here this, this spring and uh, well, summer, really shouting. And I went back to our work three times and all in different countries. And, uh, Y'all, I'll just, I'll tell you, I, I don't see what the big hadoos is uh, about up here because we've run into some nice miracles up here. We really have. I mean, whenever, whenever lupus is being healed and whenever cataracts are being banished and whenever people that, there was this one person over in, uh, over, over somewhere east, uh, must have been, uh, I don't know where it was at. Um, um, that's not important. 
their, their back was cut open two or three times by doctors and right there all of a sudden they was healed of these little, little, little cushion things up there and invertebrates was put back in there and they were healed, man. And the doctors are verifying this stuff and, it, and it's fun. It's fun to help people. Families and lives are being put back together by God and, and just because they look at you and they say, golly, man, if you can, if you can stand it, I can. And I tell them for sure, that's for sure. But I probably have more frailties in me than most people do or, or, or would believe, but yet my God is bigger than I am. Do you understand that? God is bigger than we are. Uh, if you're here tonight, you don't know Jesus is Lord, I'd really like for you to offer you an opportunity to come down here and accept Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. If you're here tonight and you don't have that mighty Holy Ghost in you and you'd really like to, it'll sure make a difference in your life. I'd like for you to come down here. If you're here and you got some kind of sickness in your body, just come rushing right down here and we're gonna pray for you in Jesus' name. Me and these guys here, we'll, we'll just go down through there. Just line up down here. Is that all right, you guys? Are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? Just line them up right down through here. Just come on down here if you have some kind of sickness. You know, maybe somebody, like he was saying earlier, that baby that was, that was doing so much better. I mean, just think, just, just a touch, just a touch from a man and, and, and faith was united together and you were believing together in Jesus' name. And I'll tell you, Jesus healed that baby. Think about that. I want you to come down here. You know, there may be some of you that's having trouble at home with your, with your finances, with your jobs. I mean, come on, don't. You must let Jesus take care of you. You, must, you have to let Jesus heal you. I'll tell you what is one of the fascinating things I've ever seen dealing with Indians. They don't have any prosperity to begin with, none. They just don't. They're making $300 a, a year, these Indians I work with. Uh, hopefully with these new political systems that are coming in, things will change for them some. Hopefully, in the name of Jesus. But I'll tell you, it's something to me. I, I was explaining this the other day. When, when an Indian gets born again, I don't, I don't go right out there and preach prosperity to those people. I don't preach it to them. I just preach Jesus. Jesus is prosperity. Their crops, I'm, it's, I tell y'all, I can't get over it. I talk about it all the time. Their crops, instead of having one ear of corn on the stalk, they get two. It's like getting a double crop every year when you have Jesus. That's just amazing. Does that amaze y'all like it does me? And here comes the birds. The birds are hungry. Of course, you always have to plant for the birds and the worms too, and, and the coons. And here they come. And they jump the Christian's crops and eat everybody else's. That's good. That's God's provisions. Church, whenever you get tired of playing games, you got to trust Jesus. You guys want to come down here, please? Uh, you might be tired, but Jack, we need to lay hands on these folks. <laughs> you, you, you understand. <laughs> come on down here, Brother Steve, if you don't mind. And, if y'all know somebody else that would help us, and let's just lay hands on these people and let's believe God. Now, here's what we're gonna do. God's gonna, yeah, God, God's gonna uh, touch y'all. Are y'all ready? I tell you what, let's do. Are all the, is this double line of people that's gonna be prayed for? They're what they call them? Y'all have baseball mitts on? I heard there was a strike. I'm the pitcher. <laughs> oh boy. All right, well, let's do this. Okay, if we're gonna do that, we want a catcher behind everybody. I don't know if y'all have teams that do that. We'll form another team. Who wants to be a catcher? If you love Jesus, come down here and be a catcher. Am I getting out of order? No. Uh, let's form some more teams down here. Well, I don't know if God called me to be a catcher. Yeah, you need to get out of there, I'm gonna come get you and embarrass you. Come on down here and be a catcher. Make sure everybody gets one because we're going to do something besides be a catcher. See, you never know what I'm going to say and do. I don't get embarrassed. Isn't that nice? I don't go out of my way to hurt people's feelings either, but, but we need people to be involved. Get down here, church. There's some people who need catchers behind them. It don't matter if you hate their guts. God's going to re rebuke that out of you and you're going to be able to help them. We've got to walk in forgiveness here. Start with me. There we go. How are we doing? Coming along here? All right, look. Just cause you're over here by the door, that don't mean nothing. You're not hit out. God knows right where you are. 
Here, we need some people right over here. Oh boy, got a whole crew now. Hey, he works out, give him two. <laughs> hey, I was out there this morning. What happened? Okay, stop, stop in. Well, look at all these antennas. All right, here's what we're gonna do, church. Now, you people that are down here on the catcher teams, The criteria for being on the team is you gotta love Jesus. All right? And you gotta know, the only ability you gotta have is say, in Jesus' name. And believe in your heart that God's gonna touch that person in front of you. Now, I don't know how they teach y'all down here, but we're gonna, we're gonna touch them first. I wouldn't be surprised, cause see, I was in some church here in Arkansas, I don't even remember where it was at. But there was a lady standing down there that was really needing God to touch her. And I just was up here and throwed at her like this, boom. It hit her, went through. See there, look at her, what I'm telling you. Y'all thought I was joking, see there? Went right through her, hit the catcher and went right out in the congregation, pop, pop, pow, about four seats back. It was amazing. You can't ever tell what God's gonna do. No strikes. Yeah, no strikes in this game, bud. You're in it for keeps. No caps on the sour either. It got side of hand in North Dakota once that I was so tired of praying for people. I was just throwing my handkerchief at them and they was getting flipped out. I got tired of doing that, so I just do this. And it didn't make, God didn't care. All right, you people in the front, y'all ready to receive, are you? All right, whatever's wrong with you, what you came for, confess it out of your mouth to Jesus. Put yourself in an attitude of receiving. Put yourself in an attitude of adoration. Put yourself in an attitude of prayer. Praying, receive, and believe it. Pray, thank him, worship him, appreciate Jesus. Now you people, you catch your team. Just lay your hand right up there on the top, or on, on the shoulder, on the, anywhere you want to. Uh, not really. On the, on, either on the head or on the shoulder of the people that you're in front of you. Now you begin to intercede for those people right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Touch them, God. Sweep this place, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Now fellas, just pray for them in Jesus' name. Because God's touched them already. Just go ahead. There's no way we can lose tonight. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, pray church. Pray church. Receive the Holy Ghost, church. In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! Boy, I love Jesus. What if he touches us tonight? What if God touches us? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Let's go this way. Is that all right? Go right down here and around there. Is that okay? Yeah, you, Brother Jack's going that way. He has to cover us. We want to go back and forth here. Y'all just, just pray. Go ahead, church. Go ahead, church. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. 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 What's the matter with him? Oh, really? Uh, how you doing, buddy? Jesus loves you. Did you hear me? God, I speak the life of God into this body. I bind the devil, I break the authorities of hell by the mighty Holy Ghost. Every hindrance, every obstacle of hell that would try to stop the healing power and the virtue of the mighty God, I rebuke you by the blood of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. You see, I wanna encourage you. You as mama, you see I was up in Minnesota. 
And that was his mama brought this little baby up that had a head this big and a body this big. You see, I don't know what the name of that devil is. And uh, laid hands on him in the name of Jesus. And in the morning, they noticed a lot of, he was acting really strange. They carried him to, the, to his doctor. The doctor said, what did y'all do? Something's wrong. And they took him and did all kinds of tests. He was being healed. By day three, he was healed. And his body now is exactly in proportion and form. And whatever that demon's name was, it's gone. Now you be encouraged and you be healed in the name of Jesus. Let's pray again, church, and thank God for the healing. Do you hear me? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Jesus name Holy Ghost Jesus name Jesus name what a God what a God what a God Jesus name spirit of power and grace mercy and peace joy in the name of Jesus 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 touch him Holy Ghost Bless them, Holy Ghost. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of power. Will grace. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Spirit of grace and mercy and power be on this baby. I speak the life of God into it. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name. Jesus yes, came and rescued oh, that's all right. me. Yes, man. Just receive Jesus then right now. Suddenly In the name of Jesus. Just confess what you come for, what you need Jesus to do. In Jesus name, God. Grant it. Jesus In came Jesus name. And set me Jesus. Free. It's worth it, church. It's worth it, church. Jesus. Sorry, right, go ahead and sing. I, sorry for interrupting you. Jesus! Like the woman with the issue of I love blood. Jesus. <laughs> I love Jesus. I'm so thankful God's touching his people. I'm so thankful he loves his people. I'm so thankful he's delivering his people. Holy Ghost! Spirit of life! In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Holy Ghost I really feel Jesus listen here if you're back there and you're sitting down or standing up or whatever you need I know you have needs just confess them out to Jesus right now just tell him thank you just worship him right now really you may feel like, I don't want to bother God. I feel like a brat sometimes. He loves you, I tell you. Don't you feel like no brat. But don't you act like one. In the name of Jesus. Then suddenly, Jesus, from sweep this place, Holy Ghost. We desire your presence. Jesus came we desire your touch, Lord. We thank you, mighty Holy Ghost. For the name then of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Touch from Thank heaven. you, Lord. Jesus came and set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a God. What a God. Jesus came and rescued. Then suddenly oh, a touch from Get heaven. Just tell Jesus, thank you. Jesus came. You want anointing? That's what you want. Be free. Tell him thank you to fill you with the anointing. In like Jesus' name, Spirit of the Holy the Ghost, come over and touch her now, God. In Jesus' name, be filled in the name we of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. We yes, like the blind man 
the devil by the name and by the blood of Jesus spirit of the devil leave this home in Jesus name out in the name of Jesus hey baby how you doing doing all right Jesus love you suddenly a touch yeah what we got Jesus came yes yes sir what Jesus came. Needs to grow out. You know what? I was up in New York City. And there was this young, young girl. How old are you? How old are you? She wasn't but nine. And her face, her jaw was over here, and her mouth moved sideways. All right? Had all of her life. I had one of the greatest privileges of my life in that service in New York City, in downtown in, in, in uh, Bethlehem Stuyvesant. It's a, it's a rough joint down in New York City. Laid hands on this girl in the name of Jesus, just like that. I got to watch her jaw and her head line up right in front of my eyes. God healed her. Isn't that something? You reckon Jesus can touch you, boy? You think so? I know so. Can you lift your hands to him? Do it. Lift your hands to Jesus. Lift them up there. Don't be nervous and don't be afraid. Jesus loves you, buddy. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? In the name of Jesus, Spirit of life, I ask you to touch him. In Jesus' name, grow. Be functional. Be normal. In the name of Jesus, I bind the devil. And I thank God for the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Lift your hands up to Jesus and tell him thank you, sir. Just go ahead and worship him. It's all right with him if you worship him. He's entirely all right with you telling him thank you. Devil, I rebuke you by the Holy Ghost power and authority of God. Leave him. Be healed. Jesus In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah. 